Hi, my name is Karen Grigg. I'm a health sciences librarian at UNC's Health Sciences Library. I'm going to talk about how to conceptualize and design your search for your uh, research topic and search strategies. So the first step is to design your research question. And part of that is just trying to figure out what's, this, what's your situation that you're looking at. In order to define your research question, there's some things that are helpful. It is very helpful to start with a topic you're interested in. And that sounds obvious, but you'll put more time and energy into a topic you chose yourself. Uh, sometimes you have one assigned to you. And you know, you'll always feel more enthusiastic with something you're actually interested in. And you may be interested in it, but you still need to confirm that your question is answerable. So you could be interested, but it may be something that's impossible to answer. One example I had was a physics student who wanted to find articles that proved uh, that the existence of God using mathematical formulas. And certainly, it was a very interesting question for him, but that just doesn't exist in the literature. So he had to come up with a different topic. Um, you may need to get more specific or you may need to broaden. And sometimes the only way you find out is to come up with a search strategy and test it. And if you have way too many articles, you probably need to be more specific. And if you have too few, it may be too narrow a topic, so you'll have to broaden. And you'll be doing a lot of revision and reconsidering. It's usually your first strategy isn't the last one. Also think about confirmation bias. You don't want to walk into a topic with a preconceived notion of what you're going to find. Look at your research question and figure out how you're going to break it apart, what subtopics is, exist in the question. And then we're going to talk about the PICO or PCOTS model, which can help you sometimes frame your research question. So it, the PCOTS model is a structured way of, of building your research question that makes you think about the different components and build it out. The P could be population, it could be a patient, or it could be a problem. So for example, population would be more than one person. It could be elderly residents of a nursing home with diabetes, that's a certain population. It could be a patient, 65 year old man with hypertension. It could be a problem, a specific disease. Um, and then the I, which also can be an E, would be either an intervention or an exposure. So an intervention would be like a specific kind of treatment or maybe a, different, a certain kind of drug, but some kind of intervention. Sometimes it would be exposure. So, you know, children exposed to lead paint, that would be the exposure, or exposed to radiation or secondhand smoke, something like that. Um, oftentimes in public health, uh, you might be looking at social determinants or contributors to a problem. So that's your primary intervention or exposure. Sometimes you'll have a comparison. So it would be like the intervention would be one kind of treatment and then comparison would be to another kind of treatment or one drug to another drug, or it could be something compared to nothing, treating a patient with this disease versus not treating them for a disease. You want to think about what outcomes you're looking at. That's pretty important. Is your outcome uh, curing a disease or um, lower mortality rate? Or it could be something like smoking cessation. Which of these two interventions or approaches causes more people to quit smoking? And then sometimes you'll have a T or an S. They're not always in every search, but T might be t um, time of duration, you know, over a two year period or types of studies in randomized controlled trials. Your setting might be in schools or in nursing homes. Just keep in mind that not all topics in your discipline will fall into the PCOTS model. Your research is very multidisciplinary and PCOTS really works well with strictly medical topics, but many times we have to look at databases for many disciplines, not just medicine, but also nursing, sociology, business, education, uh, psychology. So, if it doesn't seem to work in this model, that's okay. You just want to figure out what the subcomponents of your topic are. Um, also, for a lot of public health topics, statistics and data can be very important to your topic. So, how do you find information for your background section or your, your literature review or articles on your topic? Let's say your research question, your initial research question is what risk factors are associated with smoking? The first step is, is that a good research question? 
Um, you might be tempted at first when you're starting to research to just type that question on into Google. Well, are you getting a bunch of journal articles? No, you're, you're, you are getting some fact sheets, which might be of interest, uh, like from the CDC. There are a couple things that showed up. If you need scholarly articles, you're not going to find them this way. You could go into PubMed, our premier uh, health sciences database, and type that literal question in what risk factors are associated with smoking. PubMed does not know what to do with natural language like that. You'll note that there are over 64,000 results. And you're probably going to have to go, you know, through 100 pages before you really find what you're looking for. So, we, first of all, we need to improve that question. That is too vague. Uh, it, it's like you, the actual answer would be a list of risk factors. But we have to improve it by narrowing it to a specific answerable question. And there are many ways you can do that. You can narrow it by defining a population. You could identify a specific risk factor and look at that, or you could maybe choose a geographic region, region. You can do more than one of those things. So look at ways you can narrow your topic. So here's an example of it restructured by narrowing by population and geographical area. Uh, what risk factors are associated with smoking among youth in the Ukraine? Um, you can also add a risk factor, like economic factors. So now we have what economic factors are associated with higher smoking among youth and the, in Ukraine. Both of those are more answerable questions. And so let's say your revised question is what risk factors are associated with smoking among youth in the Ukraine? You want to start out by identifying your key or main concepts in the question and then try some test searches. Uh, sometimes I'll just do a quick and dirty search with just risk factors and smoking in youth and Ukraine and then adjust the number of concepts as necessary. Sometimes if you have four or more concepts, you might have to take them three at a time. You might find a lot of articles with A, B and C, but not very many when you limit to the Ukraine and you also might find risk factors smoking in Ukraine and not a lot that specific, specifically looked at youth. So sometimes you have to grab them, you know, a couple or a few at a time and then make the extrapolation yourself. And then build out a keyword list. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. And you'll want to document or track your process. So to build out a keyword list, start out by referring to relevant articles if you find some with your quick and dirty search and mine the titles and abstracts for other keywords other synonyms and look at their bibliography sometimes you'll find other articles just doing that look at your spelling and think about other variations so you know for example with stds it might be that some articles list them as stis or they might use the British spelling with center with re and then make sure you include plural and singular forms of words Consider adding antonyms and not just synonyms. So we have a lot of people doing research on food insecurity, but we actually find the terms in the article as food security, like lack of food security would be important, even though it's not stated as food insecurity. If needed, we're here, enlist me, enlist another HSL librarian, and also talk to your faculty. Sometimes they know uh, more of the lingo in your discipline and can give you other synonyms you might wanna check. So here's an example. Start with more straightforward concepts and use a worksheet to track. So smoking and young people. For smoking, you might start out with smoking, cigarette, cigarettes. With young people, there's young people, kids, children, teens, teenagers. When you do a sample search with those terms, one article that comes up that looks interesting is called Sharing Tobacco and E-Cigarette Information, Predicting Its Occurrence and Valence Among Youth and Young Adults. Well, right away, you see you missed a keyword, uh, too, for tobacco. So you have tobacco and e-cigarettes. You could add up to concept A. If you want e-cigarettes, some people might want to only focus on uh, traditional cigarettes. And then under young people, uh, you see that this article had the word youth and young adults, so you want to add those to your synonyms as well. And that's how we build out our synonym list, is we look at good articles and then add to the list. Quick review of Boolean logic. You may have learned this at some point in your um, academic career. Uh, when you use or as a connector between words, you are broadening your search. You're saying, give me all the articles that have either the word cat or cats in it. So I want both of those. When you use the word and, you're saying, give me um, all the articles about cats that also include 
feline leukemia. So that narrows your search. You have all the articles that have both A and B in it. And then occasionally you might use not, it might be you want articles about cats, but you don't want them if they also are about dogs. So you might say cat, not dogs. So for example, teenagers and smoking is a Boolean and. You're getting articles that have to have both teenagers and smoking in them. That's usually what you use to connect between subtopics. And then inside your one subtopic, you might have a Boolean or like smoking or vaping that covers, you know, give me either smoking or vaping along with teenagers. And you note that the ors are always in parentheses uh, to do the correct order of operations. In most databases, it does not matter if your connectors, your ands and your ors are all caps. Uh, PubMed prefers it. it. I think it's a good practice anyway because it helps your eyes follow to the right places. So use your and to connect your concepts, concept A, concept B, and concept C. Use or to connect your synonyms. And use parentheses to group synonyms. Other tips, if you're searching for a phrase such as young adults, more than one word, if you use quotation marks around your phrase, it will force those terms to be side by side. So that's, we call that phrase searching. Also, most databases use an asterisk to truncate a root term. So smoke, S-M-O-K with an asterisk will give you smoke, smokers, smoking, and then drop in terms line by line and connect with an. So putting it all together, here is a built out search strategy with um, smoke, with asterisk or tobacco or cigarette. I could put an asterisk after cigarette, I guess. And then all the young people terms under that with ors in between them and Ukraine and risk or risk factor. So some of these were new um, keywords after we mined the titles and abstracts. To avoid errors, it's, um, I think it's better to search one topic per line in your search window than to create one mega search. And then with each topic, make sure you se separate out all the keywords with ors and between each topic, use ands. And then you scan your titles and abstracts of relevant articles. Sometimes I'll do this several times and look for other terms. So having looked at some articles, I'm now adding um, cigarillo, vaping, e-cigarette. You'll see for each of these, I've found other terms that I have added after looking at my titles and abstracts. Think creatively about your search strategy. So if you're not finding a lot for Ukraine and you think that there are a lot of similarities with all former Soviet bloc nations, you could add as a synonym, former Soviet bloc. Parallel evidence, what goes on in Ukraine might also be going on in Russia. You could add or Russia to your search. And as we talked about, sometimes you only find a couple or a few of your concepts at a time. All your subtopics might not be present in all the relevant papers. So sometimes you have to build a bridge with the evidence, make the case yourself. It's important to consider gray literature, which is, you know, literature that doesn't, isn't a scholarly journal article. It might include government reports. It might include statistics or dissertations. Not all evidence will be found necessarily in scholarly journal articles. So think about who might keep track of the background information you need. Um, you can use many things to keep track of your searches. I often use it for, this is an example of a search strategy template I use for a systematic review, but you could use it for a more casual search. And I have each of my uh, search strings in its own line uh, in the table and how many I found. Uh, you can set up an My NCBI account in PubMed and you can save your searches or Word documents. Some people use spreadsheets. If you have any questions or need help, you can go to my public health subject guide uh, from the main website, and all my contact information is on that. On my uh, guides, I have a link to Ask a Librarian, which will go through the whole system, and anybody could see it in case I'm not around. But I also have a request appointment with Karen button that will go right into my Microsoft Outlook calendar, and you can book a consultation with me. You can also email me at kgrig at email.unc.edu. Thank you.